Hello and welcome to my presentation of OPC UA for Machinery, Harmonization within the VDMA. My name is Heiko Herden and I'm working in the VDMA in the Forum Industry 4.0. The VDMA is the German Machine Building Association and represents over 3,300 member companies. My job is focused around the coordination and support of our working groups working on OPC UA companion specifications. One of these companion specification working groups is OPC UA for Machinery. I am the chairman of the OPC UA for Machinery working group and in today's presentation I want to show you why we started, what we do and where we are at the moment. The VDMA is structured in many different organizational units, each representing a specific branch of the machine building industry. I marked those units that have published an OPC UA companion specification already. A companion spec gets available to the public as release candidate at first. This means that the draft is online and you can comment on that draft. After at least three months, the comments are taken into account and the specification may become a release. As you can see, we have five branches that publish the companion specification and all of them are released by now. The machine tools and manufacturing systems have published their companion spec in September 2020. They are the first working group to have published a companion spec using the machinery specification. The branch of Machine Vision was one of the first VDMA companion specs to be released in general and consists of a state machine, for example, describing the Machine Vision system in a very generic way. Another sector that is very involved in the OPC UA standardization is the plastics and rubber machinery. They release different companion specs for different machines and use cases under the name of the European Sector Committee, Euromap. In the released robotic specification, every kind of robot can be described as a motion device system with all its components. The group of robotics was also one of the first groups to release a companion spec and is currently working on a second part. And last but not least, the weighing technology group has a companion spec released since this year. There are a lot more branches and groups that are currently right in the middle of the working process of creating OPC UA companion specifications. I marked those groups in blue. The ones with a blue border are usually more advanced as they are a joint working group with the OPC foundation already. So let's take a look at this list. We have the air pollution control as a working group. We have automated guided vehicles. Compressors, compressed air and vacuum technology is our newest joint working group with the OPC foundation. There's a group for grains, which is working together with the robotics group to benefit from the motion device system they defined there. We have a group for food processing and packaging machinery. There they are doing a companion specification for the Weinsteffener standards in OPC UA. We have the foundry machinery, where high pressure die casting cells are considered. We have glass machinery, there they take a look at flat glass cutting. There's a group for integrated assembly solutions. There they consider end of arm tools like grippers and other industrial joining technologies. We have a group for interlogistic systems, for laser and laser systems for material processing. The laser group is working together with the machine tools group. We have the length measurement technology group. We have a group for mining that they consider uh, underground and surface mining. There's a group for the power transmission engineering, which means uh, they do define the whole powertrain uh, of electrical drives. There's a group for printing and paper technology, a group for pumps and systems. We have the surface technology, which is doing the material supply systems for fluids and powder. We have the textile machinery, where there are two groups, one for spinning and one for the refinement of textiles. And last but not least, we have the woodworking machinery and they are in close exchange to the machine tools group. And even more branches are aware of OPC UA, which means that they inform themselves about the technology and its possibilities. I marked those in gray. So as you have seen, the VDMA is developing OPC UA companion specifications for various sectors. But not all the information that is modeled in those working groups is sector specific. So if you take a look into the models of plastics and rubber machinery, robotics, machine tools and many more, you will find information that is relevant for the whole machine building industry. Examples are the manufacturer of a machine, the serial number or the year of production. 
and therefore we need a harmonization. We want to model such information in the same way for all the branches to create interoperability. This is the reason why we started the group OPC UA for Machinery. In OPC UA for Machinery, we are developing an OPC UA companion specification for machines and components of machines, and it will address specific use cases like the identification of machines, job handling or machine states. These use cases will be modeled in a harmonized way, and therefore the whole field of mechanical engineering industry and its customers will benefit from it. It is a big step towards plug and play, especially for the connection of different kinds of machines. The use cases are in particular useful for machines or components which are not covered by any companion specification yet, as they accelerate the creation of an interface and bring the advantages of a standardized solution. To describe those use cases, we will use the mechanism of building blocks. Building blocks can be released one by one, and so we have a faster time to market. Also, it's possible to implement only the required building blocks. The building blocks can be used by specific interfaces or by whole companion specifications. In the illustration shown below, you can see how companion specifications might work together. So we have the machinery specification as base specification and sector specifications on top. So for example, for a robot, you will have the OPC UA for machinery specification as base and the CS for robotics on top. And for other specific machines, you might even implement more companion specifications. So for example, if you take a look at the middle of the picture, you can see all the specifications of the plastics and rubber machinery sector, which are called Euromap. And there you have the machinery specification as base specification. On top of that, you have the Euromap 83, which is the base specification for the field of plastics and rubber machinery. And on top, you have the specific specification, for example, for the communication between injection molding machine and MES or injection molding machine and robot. Another example is on the left side, where you can see if you have a laser cutting machine, you will have the companion spec for laser, for machine tools and machinery implemented. The idea to create such interoperable interfaces is supported by the Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. It's part of the project II4IP, which stands for Interoperable Interfaces for Intelligent Production. The objective of this project is to create harmonized interoperability for OPC UA companion specifications. Therefore, OPC UA for machinery is playing a key role. Furthermore, we want to integrate other sectors, transfer our knowledge and achieve an internationalization. Now let's take a look at the history of our working group. In September 2019, we started with our preliminary work. In the next month, we defined our first use cases, which we wanted to address. The kickoff of the joint working group took place in February 2020. And in April 2020, we had our first public draft. While we received some comments for that draft, we defined a roadmap. And the roadmap is saying which use cases we want to do in general and in what order. In September 2020, we had the release of that part one. And now in November 2020, we have a release candidate ready for the next use cases. Our group is assembled by experts from different companion specification working groups that are either very far or have a release or release candidate already published. Therefore, we have experts from the field of robotics, machine tools, metallurgy, drives, plastics and rubber machinery, and also machine vision, woodworking machinery, weighing, and food and packaging. Furthermore, we have Dr. Wolfgang Manke as modeling expert. He is leading the OPC Foundation Harmonization Group and therefore acts as another factor for quality assurance. As I have mentioned before, we are a joint working group between the VDMA and the OPC Foundation. This means that members of both organizations are invited to participate. The OPC Foundation is specifying the technology of OPC UA, and OPC UA is using the companion specifications. The companion specifications for the field of mechanical engineering are made by VDMA and its member companies. Those specifications, for example, the robotics and the drives, are accepted 
by the OPC Foundation and the OPC Foundation is trying to make sure that there are no parallel standards for those sectors. And the same applies for the OPC UA for machinery specification. To make sure that all the companion specifications are compatible with OPC UA for machinery, we have an extensive feedback process for all proposals. So at first the machinery working group defines a draft. When the draft is finished, we send it to all the VDMA working groups. They can comment on it and give us feedback. The received comments will be resolved. As soon as this is done, the enhanced draft goes out to the public as release candidate. This release candidate can be commented on for a period of at least 90 days. At some point afterwards, a comment review will take place together with the working group and persons who commented on the release candidate. When all the comments are resolved, the machinery specification will become a public release after all. At the moment, there is one release and one release candidate of OPC UA for machinery available. The building blocks that are part of the release are machine identification and nameplate and finding all machines in a server. The first use case guarantees a unique identification of each machine supporting this building block. It consists of variables like manufacturer and serial number. The other use case is for aggregating servers to simply find all machines that support the machine identification building block. The next building blocks are currently available as release candidate and consist of the use cases component identification and finding all components of a machine. Both are similar to the first two use cases but are designed for components and therefore models slightly different. More information on the content is given by my colleague Mr. Timo Helfrich in the Machinery Technical Deep Dive session. So let's take a look at the roadmap now which I mentioned earlier. We made a survey within the VDMA to collect all the use cases that should be addressed in our base specification in a harmonized way. Afterwards, we prioritized them and the roadmap is the result. We figured out that we should start with component identification and machine states. As you have seen on the slide before, component identification is finished already. In machine states, we talk about basic states of a machine, like if the machine is producing, ready to produce or in an error state. After that, we will take a look into job and dataset management and check if process values can be represented properly in OPC UA. As soon as we are done with those use cases, we will evaluate the medium term topics. These are production cell identification, condition based actions with standardized messaging, equipment management and documentation. And after that, we also have a lot of topics in our backlog. We might adjust the roadmap to other activities like the asset management group. Our work mode looks like this. The OPC UA for machinery group consists of a joint working group and several core working groups. At the moment we have a core working group for machine state and a core working group for component identification. Those core working groups are working on the models and they present their proposals to the joint working group. The joint working group gives feedback to the core working groups. The core working groups don't present the proposals to each other because the other core working group is always part of the joint working group. So this was a brief overview and introduction to OPC UA for machinery. If you want to download the specification, you should check out opcua.vdma.org. I want to thank you all for your attention and wish you the very best for the future.